Sorry, Miss it. All right, I remember. Welcome to Artisarium. My name is Robin. And I'm Eleanor. And in this three-part series, we're gonna show you how we made our Cyberpunk 2077 character costume. In episode one, we made the gorilla arms, the brain dance wreath, and Crash the Revolver. First off, Gorilla Arms. Gorilla Arms is a cybernetics mod that makes you stronger and can punch people really hard. The plan is to cover a pair of thin fabric working gloves with latex, 3D model and print all the hard knuckle parts and mold the cables between the knuckle parts also from latex. And we want you to watch. Yeah, Robin, why are we talking like this? Because it's cyberpunk! Okay, so the first thing I did was go into Fusion 360 and make models out of reference picture I took from the game. Down below you will find a link to the models if you want to make your own Gorilla Arms. Hell yeah! These pictures are sped up, unfortunately. I'd love to have a 3D print that I could print this fast. That would be cool. After everything was printed, it's time to remove all the support and sand all the lines and shit down because they aren't pretty. This is Robin's most favorite part. No, it's not. But you gotta do it. When everything was sanded properly, kind of, I put all the pieces on a sheet of paper with some poster putty so they won't fly around when I airbrushed them. First, I primed them with some neutral gray. Then I remembered they were gonna be black, but just around the edges. But at this point I realized I had been a little bit sloppy when sanding, so to cover up the printing lines even more, I used some thicker hammerite metal paint instead. It looks really nice and shiny. But they're actually not gonna be pure white, they're gonna be more of a beige, so I airbrushed them afterwards. And all the parts had these small numbers on the side, so I had to do them. And also these brackets on the knuckle parts. When everything was dry, I finished off with some clear coat. Unfortunately, my spray can fucked up. Bummer. So... How are you going to do the cables? Well, the cables need to be flexible so I can bend my fingers. So I decided to mold them out of latex. And to do that, I first made plugs out of duct tape representing the cables. And since the cables are flat, I can make a one-sided mold. So I just used some monster clay and I pushed down my plugs into it. Mixing colors into latex, it's important it's water-based, otherwise it will separate. When making molds, you usually have to trim off the edges afterwards. To make the text on the cables, I used a regular Sharpie pen. In a previous episode, I made some plaster hands, and now they came in handy. <laughs> I attached all the printed parts to a pair of thin fabric working gloves using contact cement. Then it was time to paint on latex to the gloves, but I actually didn't paint it on, I dabbed it on with a piece of foam because it's much easier and you don't get brush strokes. The first layer I made transparent to get better adhesion to the textile, then I added color to the mixture. If you're wondering what I'm doing in the background, subscribe, because that's coming up in the next episodes. Alright! Uh, 
couple of days later, when the latex was fully dried, I painted on some guiding lines while I wanted to cut them up. But before I did that, I had some texting to do. Some really, really small text. This is a needle, okay? But before doing any cutting in that sticky latex, I need to add a couple of layers of this flexible, glossy no tag coat. Latex had actually soaked through the fabric more than I expected, so I had to use a small spatula to peel it off the plaster. Huh, nice. Cool. <laughs> Fits like a glove. Weird. Then I trimmed off the edges where I made the guidelines. And then, the final step, attaching all the cables between each part, using contact cement. Is that it? Yep, yep, yep. Nice. And when it's time to use these for reals, I'll glue them down with some prosthetic adhesive. Next up, Brain Dance Wreath. The Brain Dance Wreath is like a VR headset, but instead of showing you pictures visually, it just connects right into your brain in a kind of scary way. And the good thing when it came to making these was that I didn't have to do all the modeling myself because this cool guy, Curtis Lee from Starside Armory, had already done one that I really liked. And the cool thing about this model was that it included some wirings for LED, so it lights up your eyes, just like in the game. Dude! And this time, Pascal helped me with the sanding. Good boy. In the end, these are gonna be pink with some cool chrome hexagonal shape. But first you need to prime everything. And sometimes parts can be too small to prime with an airbrush, then you can just prime them with a brush. The designer of this thing, Curtis Lee from Starside Armory, have already made a great tutorial over at their YouTube channel on how you do the wirings on this thing. So I'm not gonna go through it in any details, but basically, the cables run through the whole thing in a very, very complicated way, and uh, you gotta be careful to not do it wrong, just, you know, follow the instructions. But this is how it looks when it's done. It's very simple, actually. When you download the model, you actually get a great tutorial on how to assemble everything also, so just download the model and assemble it the way it's supposed to be assembled. Actually, this thing is something I came up with myself. You see, one of the cables for the LEDs actually run through this uh, springy hose, so I just took a thick metal wire and twisted some thinner metal wires around it to make the hose. And then I removed the thicker wire, and now I can put the little cable inside of it. Nice. And now it's assembled. Time to paint. First off, I paint everything in chrome. For the 
hexagonal shapes, I made stencils out of tape that I just printed out on regular paper, then cut out and peel off the paper. It's really time consuming, this part took me about a day, but if you don't have proper stencil paper and a laser cutter, this is a really nice trick. Time to paint it pink. was dry, I removed all the hexagonal stencils, uncovering the chrome underneath. Yeah, that turned out great actually. Then I used a small brush to paint in all the small details like this. Small buttons here, blue and red, and I used a Molotov chrome pencil for all the shiny parts. When that was dry, I connected the LEDs to the cables and pushed in the back panel. Now when everything is assembled and painted, I take the Molotov chrome paint on some piece of paper and I go over all the edges to make it look worn. Then I seal the paint with some finish. And when that is dry I go over the whole thing with some wet brown acrylic paint that I wipe off before it dries, so it just stays in all the creases and cracks. Now the last thing to do is to cushion in the back. I just used some regular foam material for this part, nothing fancy. And then I sanded it down, heated it up with a heat gun to bend it into shape. And then I glued it on with some contact cement. Simple as that. Finito. Now for part 3 in this episode, we're gonna do the Crash Revolver. It's a revolver that you get from a guy called River. It's a really cool revolver, so I really wanted to make it for my costume. Gonna 3D print it and luckily, this was also on the internet already, so I just downloaded a model and I printed it out and I assembled it. And then I painted it. As simple as that, you don't always have to do everything yourself when there's a lot of people out there making stuff for you. Like this guy. He's a cool guy. I like him. Thanks, Sven Biedenweg. The nice thing with this model was that it came in a simpler 9-part version. And since I'm not gonna use it for anything else than just taking pictures, I didn't need anything that worked for real. And this time I glued the whole model together with acetone. I just brushed it on the surfaces and then I pushed the pieces together. It melts the PLA plastic that I use for printing this and when it cures it bonds better than any other adhesive could. Just be careful to not get too much on your hands. But then again, sanding everything down to get rid of all those printing lines. But this time I actually got out and bought myself a little handy sander. But I'm not gonna let you watch this, this is boring. You can watch me paint instead. But first we're gonna have to prime it. I have nothing to say here. You know what I'm doing. Oh, actually, I want to tell you about this. The cylinder had this rugged surface, so to make that I just dabbed on some acrylic paint with a sponge. Now back to the montage.
iridescent chrome. Ooh, shiny. Yeah. to look like it's been through hell. So I really worked on those edges with a Molotov pencil. This time, I just felt like I couldn't overdo it. More is more. Sealing with finish. The brain dance wreath and the crash revolver is all done, and we're just gonna wait for this loading screen a little bit, then we're gonna watch the B-roll together. Motherfuckers, I'm sure you're tired of my voice now, so that's all for episode one. In episode two, Eleanor is gonna show you how to make the pants. All right. You know what to do before you leave. Pew pew. Click click. <laughs>